If you're here, you're most probably a sports fan or just very nosy. And no, this isn't a video about our cute, cuddly canines either. It's time for some rugby. Anger and worry strike the world of rugby, where the Bulldogs receive criticism for mismanaging their recruitment. Whatever may be the case, let's tackle this new problem that has arisen for the fans of this unique sport. First up, the Bulldogs' recruitment mess. Okay, so firstly, the Bulldogs haven't been performing very well this season during the NRL, and the fans are a bit agitated. What'll happen now that we don't have Coach Dean Pay and there's no permanent coach to handle this new underperforming roster. As of yet, it's sad that no one knows. What is currently the talk of the town is how coach Dean Pay has been treated by the Bulldogs amid the fallout from Trent Barrett's quitting, making Paul Kent discuss the abhorrent treatment of the previous coach. If you didn't know, Pay was replaced by Barrett in 2021 after 19 wins in 57 matches over three seasons. And what's even more interesting is that he did it despite being hamstrung by the number of recruits he was allowed to bring to the club due to salary cap issues. Talk about a dedicated coach. If you can't afford to pay the players, is it your right to ask the players to perform? And the fact that coaches weren't allowed to pick the expensive players and were expected to make sure the team performed well, something doesn't sit right about that demand. Anyway, next, we have the Kent rant. Kent began to question the logic behind the Bulldogs' recruitment drive last season, which has so far failed to get the club off the bottom of the ladder, particularly in light of the lack of support for pay during his tenure. He's been pretty upset about the fact that they let the players unfold by themselves and went in to the market last year even when, for two whole years, they'd let poor old Dean Pay sit on the bench and wither as a coach. They also never allowed him to go to the market and buy the quality players he wanted for the team because everyone knew the salary cap was out of shape and there were overpriced players out there that they wanted but couldn't get. Ken went on to say that even when the management knew all of this and knew that it wasn't Pay's fault that the team was playing so bad, they went ahead and made Dean Pay suffer. Just when he thought that now he had some clear air and the salary cap would open up, he'll be able to go to the market and buy some players and make sure the team starts getting better. And what do they do? They go ahead and sack pay and replace him with Trent Barrett, naively thinking that the problem was in the coach when now they see that it wasn't. Well, what happened after their poor decision? Barrett quit. The club's decision-making skills are now somewhat of a question mark, to be very honest. And now, Pay speaks up. Regarding his treatment and the scandal that's now on the horizon for the Bulldogs club, Pay went on to reveal to the Daily Telegraph that the powerful factions of the Bulldogs club control the fate of the coach in both his and Barrett's case regardless of their credentials for the job. Pay said that he doesn't want to sound bitter, but it's the reality. They don't care what the credentials are and just go ahead and fire anyone whenever they want. He says that whether he thinks he got a fair crack or not isn't up to him, and it doesn't matter because he isn't the one doing the firing or the hiring, and neither is in Trent Barrett's hands, those people sitting at the top making whatever decisions they want. Dean Pay sadly goes on and says that now that he looks back, he knows that there were people in that club and management who believed he wasn't up to the job and would fail as a coach, and that was their opinion, and and they had the power, and that's why he had to go. We would agree with the decision had it been the right one. After they fired Pay, every fan and critic was looking directly at Barrett, thinking he's the club management's favorite, and apparently, that's who they trust. So he'll be good, right? Wrong. Despite the spin coming out of the club, the same thing seems to have happened with Barrett. Kent believes the Bulldogs rushed their recruitment drive and didn't buy the right players in key positions that could help turn the club around. And that's what their issue has been since the beginning. Money. Barrett came in, and they panic-bought players again. And they they don't seem to have a plan. Next, we have the disappointed Crawley. We look at the teams that have improved significantly this season. Let's look at the Cowboys, Cronulla, and Broncos. They went and bought halfbacks. That has been the difference between them and the Bulldogs. Pay says that he knows Burton is a 5'8", but he's not a number 7, and there's no big difference in the way they play. And for all the money that the Bulldogs spent, the others were buying in positions they already had some sort of depth in, which was a wise decision on their part, and Bulldogs could learn from it. Paul Crawley agrees that the board needs to answer for signing off on some poor recruitment decisions, which have been unable to help the club climb off the bottom of the ladder. Crawley says that Trent bought Kyle Flanagan and it wasn't a leftover from Dean Pay. It was totally Barrett's call. He says that he apparently doesn't know rugby league as well as Phil Gould, but he's been there and the board has been there. They've all signed off on these guys and he's told them that if they couldn't have looked at the guys they were bringing in this year and not think these are danger signs, they were clueless. But nobody listened to him and the board signed off on it. Oh well. Let's wish the Bulldogs good luck and and hope the management will finally open its eyes to its own faults. Moving on from Bulldogs and their rotten luck and poor decisions, we'll now cover some other rugby topics in the other news section. Starting with the worst kind of people, Bulldog star slams media as Trent Barrett quits. As we know, Trent Barrett quit as coach of the Canterbury Bulldogs, officially parting ways with the club after a horror start to the season. Despite being under contract until the end of 2023, Barrett's last game as coach was a dreadful 16-6 loss to Newcastle on Friday night. Paul Vaughn 
Vaughn recently talked to the media and said that the media are the worst kind of people because they think it's their right to be wherever they want to be. This happened after the news of Trent Barrett quitting the team broke and the media people gathered outside the club. His exact words were, do you have to be here? You're the worst kind of people. Next, Phil Gould reveals plans to totally reshape Bulldogs. Phil Gould did it before in Penrith, and now he has a plan to make the Bulldogs a powerhouse again. In a dramatic week for the Bulldogs, we saw Trent Barrett resign as head coach and rumors of potential player movement swirling around. Speaking on a podcast, the Bulldogs general manager revealed he has an 18-month plan to put the club in a position to totally reshape. Okay, sounds optimistic. He says that Penrith and Bulldogs both have many similarities and differences, and he believes he can reshape this team. Panthers were once in the same position, and there's no stopping them now. He assures us that the Bulldogs will be that good again, too. He guarantees it. He says he knows that the Bulldogs are a big club and have a massive fan base, and the club has been in the doldrums for years. He knows it's been frustrating, but we have to understand that nobody can just wave a magic wand and fix that. It's taken a long time to get into this state. We can't just suddenly turn it around in a day. He continues that, sure, they've had a phase of continuous losses, but it's only going to get better from here, and people need to accept it because it's the truth. We admire Phil Gould's confidence for his team and wish that whatever he's planned for them, it works out because the fans are now getting angry and they need damage control. And finally, the interim Bulldogs coach, Potter. Mick Potter is now in charge of the Bulldogs now that Barrett has resigned, but this is only temporary while they look for a coach. The former Premiership winning legend will be in charge of the Canterbury's game against the Tigers. Phil Gould is happy and says he really appreciated that Michael had stepped up and helped them at this time. He went on to say that he knows Potter will bring a new voice and new ideas for the Bulldogs players. That's a wrap for this video. If you have any questions related to the Bulldogs' fate and what their future looks like, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one. Bye.